from the St. Ignatius Chapel at the Manresa Jesuit Spiritual Renewal Center in Pickering, Ontario. The National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Roshan Lloyd de Souza, and today our homilist is Deacon Robert Kinghorn. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Ottawa, Ontario. This Mass is offered in loving memory of her parents and her sister, Lidwin Redmond. In thanksgiving for many blessings received, and for the spiritual, mental, and physical well-being of all her relatives and friends. We know that this television mass brings meaning to the lives of tens of thousands of the faithful across Canada and around the world, and they join with me in thanking our donor for the gift of this mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we honor St. Margaret of Scotland. St. Margaret was known for her love for the poor downtrodden in the society. And today as we begin this celebration, we too are called to love our neighbor, to especially show care and concern to the poor and neglected in the society. To enter into this celebration, let us call to mind our sins, failings, and shortcomings, and seek God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Margaret of Scotland wonderful in her outstanding charity toward the poor, grant that through her intercession and example, we may reflect among all humanity the image of your divine goodness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the third letter of John. From the elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the friends, even though they are strangers to you. They have testified to your love before the church. You will do well to send them on in a manner worthy of God. They began their journey for the sake of Christ, accepting no support from non-believers. Therefore, we ought to support such people so that we may become co-workers with the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Wealth and riches are in their houses and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. Happy are those who fear the Lord. Hello. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God has called us with the gospel to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while the judge refused but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what that unjust says, and will not God grant justice to his chosen ones? who cry out to him day and night. Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet when the Son of Man comes, will he found faith on earth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we celebrate the, the Feast of St. Margaret of Scotland. And as I often do, I remind you that we pray for saints because we respect their lives, but also to remind us of how we should live our lives as well. So St. Margaret was a, an English princess and she was brought up in Hungary and she was taught by the Benedictines. So for much of her life, uh, she lived the Benedictine model about work and prayer. So uh, she ended up in Scotland because she was shipwrecked and she married the King of Scotland. Now marrying a king doesn't make you uh, a saint, but it makes you a queen. So she was Queen of Scotland. But she wasn't a queen that would stay in her own palace. The tradition has it, as Father mentioned, she always reached out to the poor in society calling them even every day they could come into the king's palace there. And she would sit with them. She'd wash their feet and she'd feed them. The, those who were least and the lowly and even prisoners would come for her. So she became one of the people who was known to love the poor and to know their names and to be with them. In fact, if you go to Scotland, there, there's a stone close to where she lived. And it was called the listening stone, St. Margaret's stone, where people would, just if they're out walk, she would wait for them to come and come and just listen to them. And they'd talk about their, their lives and how she could help them. She had this great, great love for the poor and those around her. Now, there's, there's a member, a bishop, that, his name was uh, Bishop Untner from Saginaw, Michigan, and he once said something I'll always remember. He said, we as a church have to go out of our way to find the poor. Because we don't bump into them usually in the, in the grocery store. They don't go around in our circles of friends. And you don't find them on parish councils or parish committees. Often you find people sitting around who are not the poor and the lowly, and we're speaking on their behalf. So Bishop Buntner was saying, they should be with us in these groups, these committees, 
and speak for themselves. We've got to give them that voice. So this is what Margaret always did. She gave the poor and lowly a voice, and she listened to them. There's another friend who once uh, said, Rick Tobias was his name, he talked about scripture. And he said in scripture, there's a thousand references in scripture to the poor. He said there's another thousand that speak of justice and the call of justice in scripture. Another thousand that talk about injustice in the land and its impact upon people. So that, he said, is 3,000 verses, which is more or less the same as we have in all of the Gospels together. And he said, you know, that's why I, this Rick Tobias, was called to work with the poor. Because he said, with all of these verses in Scripture, they're talking about it. I know when I go to die and I meet God, God's going to say, so what did you do for the poor? And if I say nothing, he'd say, didn't you read my book? <laughs> so this is what brought him as well. And I think for all of us, isn't this what we're called to be and to do? To be people who are always including those who are poor, listening to those who are poor, those who don't have a voice in society, just like St. Margaret of Scotland, but we have to go out of our way to find them very often because often they're ashamed of who they are and people look down upon them. So like St. Margaret of Scotland, we have to go out. I once had a place in the city here, a place, we called it the listening post. It was a little house and we said, come in and we will listen to you. So we sat there with always someone there each day and people would come off the street just talk about their problems and of someone who would listen to them. This is in the model of St. Margaret of Scotland who taught us how to do this. By her own life, she was always there. And the king that she married was called a tempestuous king. <laughs> you can imagine what that's like with a king being tempestuous. But she, by her saintliness, by being with her husband, not preaching to him, arguing with him, but he did a lot for the church, even though he wasn't a Catholic. He did so much for the church because of the love of St. Margaret of Scotland, who showed him how he should be with other people. So this is a great saint whose feast day we celebrate today. And I think we can all sort of sit back and say, how does that remind me of who I should be in my life? When we meet people, don't just walk them by, walk by as if they don't know them. Say hello in there. How are you today? And have a response to that. Now the judge today in the, in the gospel, we heard how it said he could go and help this widow. He was the one that was able to do that. And yet he sat back and he listened. And he said, well, let someone else do that. I think we say in the world, why is there not more justice in the world? Why doesn't God do something about this? All the injustice. If I was God, I would do that. But isn't it true? Just as the, the lawyer today in the gospel said, oh, I'm the one that's got the power to do that. I think this is what St. Margaret of Scotland is teaching us today that when we have these moments, when we think about injustice in the world, we have to look around and say, what am I called to do about it? How am I called to go out and be with people who are hurting, even the streets of our city, even our neighbours next door, those who are sick, but the least and the lowly, how can I be with them? See, we're all called, like St. Margaret, to do justice, to be the ones. And that's why I think we come to this Eucharist together, isn't it? Because we know we need help with that. We know we need that strength within ourselves to go out and be with people. But all that, that time to be able to sit with them 
and listen to their problems. Be with them. So I think this is why today we're coming to celebrate where Jesus is with us and he gives us his strength. He knows our weakness, but when we call upon the Lord Jesus, he is the one who gives us his strength. His strength as we unite ourselves with Jesus in this Eucharist, he comes to us and says, I'm here for you, the least and the lowly. I will always be with you. Come to me. Just as St. Margaret did, we thank the Lord for that great grace. So now, let us join together. Let's join together in prayer. As the intercession of St. Margaret of Scotland we call upon, so let us pray to our Father in heaven, who is our hope and our strength. Let us pray for all who are excluded in society and feel isolated and alone, that they will feel the presence of Jesus through the acceptance of others and the prayers of our daily TV Mass community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those among us who struggle with fears and regrets and doubts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, called to live God's word in service to others, that it will always welcome the sinners and the poor in their midst. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our community prayer this month is for all those listed in the daily TV Mass Book of Remembrance and for all the souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus came to announce the good news of your love for the least, the little, and the lost. Hear these prayers as we celebrate the Feast of St. Margaret of Scotland and help us to be like her in living a life of prayer and good works. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to our hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we, who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity, may, by the example of Blessed Margaret, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Margaret of Scotland, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called as to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, 
but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. With the body of Christ. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we who are renewed by these sacred mysteries may follow the example of Blessed Margaret, who honored you with tireless devotion and by surpassing charity was of service to your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. We gather.